All right, uh, in this video, I wanted to talk about two mechanisms that result in speciation. So as we've been talking about evolution, we're thinking about how evolution can create new species. And in other videos, we've talked about how species are groups of organisms that can't mate with one another to produce fertile offspring. So what are the ways, or what are two mechanisms that result in the generation of new species? So we're gonna talk about allopatric speciation events and then sympatric speciation events. So again, speciation, either of these events, is quite simply the process of generating a new species. So how do we go from having one species to having two different species? So we're gonna break speciation into two mechanisms. There's allopatric speciation, right? And then there's sympatric speciation. So let's address each one individually. So first, allopatric speciation, right? Allopatric speciation is when we have a population, right? A population is a group of organisms living in the same place at the same time, and it contains one species, right? But then we're gonna separate that by a geographic barrier. We're gonna let time pass, and those two populations that are separated now, um, when they come back together, they can no longer reproduce. If that's the case, we now have two species. So before this population was separated by a geographical barrier, there was one species. Then we separated them, let time pass, bring them back together, and we've got two species. Speciation has happened. So if we represent that with an image, right, we have one population, we separate it by some geographic barrier, maybe a mountains or a river or an ocean, separates the two pop, two pop, the population into two groups. We let time pass, and eventually something happens in one of the populations that will keep them from being able to mate with individuals in the other population, right? So if they come back together, there's no longer a geographic barrier. We have two different species. So allopatric speciation is just speciation that's the result of separating a population, one species, with a geographic barrier. And then in the future, when the geographic barrier is gone, those two populations cannot reproduce to produce fertile offspring. And we have two species. So let's think about a real world example of allopatric speciation. And in this example, we'll talk about some salamanders that live on the west coast of North America. So over time, um, this population of salamanders began in the Pacific Northwest, and there was just one species of salamander. That population began to expand its habitat southward. So they live in the forests near the coast, they were migrating south, and then at this point in Northern California, that one population of salamanders, as they migrated south, um, some of them went through these mountains in the east, and other ones went through the mountains in the west. So we separated the population with this giant valley in between the two populations that were migrating south. In these two environments, they experienced different um, selective pressures. Uh, in each environment, it was beneficial to have different traits. If I recall correctly, um, in the mountains, the most beneficial trait in terms of the appearance of the salamanders was to mimic what it looked like, what poisonous newts in that environment looked like. So they got these bold coloration patterns that warned predators that they might be a poisonous newt. Now they're not actually poisonous newts, they're salamanders, but looking like poisonous newts protected them. Whereas in the, on the coast, the adaptation that was most beneficial was to have a camouflaged appearance, to look like your habitat so that your predators could not find you as well. Right, so again, we started with one population of salamanders, they moved south, 
In California, some went through the mountains, some went on the coastline. They experienced different selective pressures in these two separate environments. But as these populations migrated further and further south over thousands of years, they met back up in Southern California. The populations mixed again. It took a long time for them to migrate that distance, so evolution had occurred in the meantime. And when the populations mixed, they were no longer able to mate and produce fertile offspring. So we had created two separate species because we separated the original species with a geographic barrier, the Central Valley. And at the end, we had two species. That's allopatric speciation. So how about sympatric speciation? So sympatric speciation is when we have a population that contains one species, and we keep that population all together in one place. And then in that place, without geographic isolation, we, re we get two species. So if we think about that in a diagram, we've got our population all in one place. The whole population stays in one place. There's no geographic barrier. In theory, any of these organisms could interact with any other organism in the population. But somehow, we generate a new species within this population. So we add some reproductive isolation, and now the two species can no longer reproduce. And we started with one species, and we end with two species. So it was a speciation event. And it was a sympatric speciation event because they were all in the same place at the same time. So let's think about a real-world example, example of sympatric speciation. So sympatric speciation is known to have uh, happened in the cichlid population. So cichlids are a kind of fish. Uh, these cichlids are found in a specific lake in Africa, Lake Malawi. So um, <clears throat> if we go to Lake Malawi, we can find all these different species of cichlids. They all arose in Lake Malawi. So all these species of cichlids are native to Lake Malawi. We only find them in Lake Malawi. Uh, and they all arose from one starting population of cichlid. So let's look at a map of Lake Malawi. It's a pretty big lake here in Africa, near Zambia, Tanzania, and Mozambique. Okay. So Lake Malawi is this lake. At some point, there was one kind of cichlid fish in that lake. And then over evolutionary time, uh, reproductive barriers arose within that one population that kept some of the fish from mating with other fish. And we got multiple species within this one habitat, right? In theory, any one of these fish could swim anywhere in this lake at any time. So there were no geographical barriers, but within that one population, we got mutations and um, selected selection for different traits that resulted in reproductive barriers that kept the new kinds of fish from mating with the original kind of fish to produce live offspring. We got a speciation event in one place, so it's a sympatric speciation event. So I hope those examples help um, sort of lay out how speciation works. Um, as always, if you have questions, I hope you'll let me know. Um, you can reach me in the discussion board or email or in class, and I'll look forward to talking to you all later.